is that only people who are near-death survivors or cancer survivors could ever really understand or appreciate because I won't even be able to understand it. And I said, so I, I think that's the goal. And so <clears throat> we decided to develop, uh, we used Mount Everest as the analogy. Um, we decided that Cole um, was far from who he was before. Uh, and we literally drew this out on the back of an envelope. And I said, there's five base camps to get to the top of Mount Everest. And I said, you don't appreciate it, but you're actually not at the bottom. I said, you were at the bottom when you came into the ER and you had a Glasgow coma scale of five. I said, you're now conscious and awake and alert and you're able to talk and breathe and eat and all these different things which have been significant accomplishments. But then we developed goals that were tied to each one of the base camps going forward. And so those began to be the things that we worked towards in the hospital or that Cole worked towards in the hospital. And uh, we're still at base camp four because the pinnacle of the mountain is actually getting to the top. You know, that's having a full and complete recovery. And, uh, you know, going from step four to five is the most difficult one. It was a great way to look at it and a great way to, for him to have goals that he could establish and work towards. So it's going to be a while before we get to base camp five, but we're confident that based upon Cole's faith in God and his determination and his overall strength and, and just positive attitude that he's going to get there over time. Yeah, a lot. I, it's been really hard to like go to therapy two times a week and at one time three times, three times a week. And in the hospital, it just seems like all a blur now. Like, like all eight hours of therapy a day seems just like it never happened. And this is something that I can take personal credit for. A lot, some other programs do it, but we, we try to do it on most of our pediatric flights is that we do offer the parent a flight back with us if that is possible that they're not injured or that they feel comfortable enough flying. It is what's in the best interest of the parent often and definitely the child. Um, very few two-year-olds want to ride in something that is frightening like an ambulance or a helicopter um, that if they don't have a parent there with them. And they can also provide not only support for their child but give us information about the child's medical history about maybe the history of the incident. So it's, it's very important um, that we try to offer that to our parents. I came back, I worked here for about, I want to say 10 years before I had my child. And I always thought it was a good idea to bring a parent along until after I had my child. And I, I came back to work and said, we are changing our policy. We are offering every parent to get a ride because it, there's no way that my daughter would ride on a helicopter without me assisting her. I mean, I would just be there to hold her hand and talk to her and help her through that crisis. And I think that's important. And we have the ability because our aircraft's big enough that we can offer a parent the ride, which is really nice. It's, it can be extremely important both to the parent and to the child, if the child is awake and at all aware of what's going on, to be able to offer them that chance to be transported together. Um, and so whenever we're flying a pediatric patient, we try to do that if we can. You always have to keep in mind the safety aspect. Is, is this parent calm enough to not pose any sort of safety risk in the helicopter? And that's a, a decision that ultimately the pilot makes. Depends on the, the, the nature of the child and the injury. Depends on where the, pa the parent is sitting. If the parent is sitting up front, um, at times we're giving regular reassuring updates to the parent that can't see their sick kid in the back of the, of the, back of the helicopter. When they're sitting back there with us, which is uncommon but does happen, it's, it's that same kind of reassurance while doing your job. And quite honestly, Children's Hospital trained us to do that because they regularly incorporate families into the care of the patients at the bedside, whether it be a cardiac arrest or setting a bone or a resuscitation. They will bring the, the family in and sit them in the room while a cardiac arrest is being run. And so a lot of us have gotten fairly comfortable in doing that because that is so standard of care over there. It is such the norm that it, it, it comes almost a second nature for a lot of us, uh, a lot of the residents, the physicians that still work with air care, having done that at Children's Hospital. And being able to both effectively do your job to provide appropriate care for that patient in addition to emotional care for the family, um, the, the parent that is with you flying. Um, it is important. Um, I, now being a father myself, I could not imagine putting my three-year-old on that helicopter to go away without me, um, there to at least be 
physically present even though I can't do anything. And so reassuring the parent that even if the kid's not okay, that we're doing everything that we can to continue to stabilize and get them to where they need to be. Whenever we can, we bring that parent um, because it can be actually therapeutic, not only psychologically, but I believe actually physically to, the, to an injured child to have that calming influence of having mom or dad nearby. Um, and depending on the logistics of what needs to be done, sometimes we position the parent in back with us and the child, and other times that's not possible, and so they ride up front with the pilot. Um, and that's one thing that it's, uh, it's very nice that we have, that we fly with the aircraft that we do, the Eurocopter BK-117, which has the space and the power to enable us to do that sort of thing, uh, which uh, a lot of EMS helicopters nationally and in our area uh, cannot offer, and so they, they can't offer that uh, sort of benefit to the parent and to the child. Um, if somebody asked me today what would be the most memorable story that I've ever had, the most memorable flight that I've ever had, it would be my flight to Union Township numerous years ago where um, we, we landed at a car accident scene and um, the, the patient was a pregnant mom that was term and she was in extreme trauma. She had multiple injuries. We had to expedite her care. We um, put a tube in her airway, we gave her blood products, we rushed her to the hospital. Um, on the way there, we notified all the appropriate personnel, being the trauma team, the OB team, and um, within minutes of arriving, the baby was delivered. And um, the only reason that he even survived was because all of the players did what they were supposed to do from Union Township Fire Department calling us immediately upon arriving at the scene, realizing that this patient was extremely severe. Um, us taking care of the patient expediently and, and doing everything that needed to happen to give the, her and the baby the best chance, notifying the appropriate personnel, and then everybody back at the trauma center doing what they were trained to do, and delivered this baby um, as quickly as possible. He upon delivery had to have CPR done. He did not have spontaneous breathing or heartbeat um, and for a number of minutes, but because every, th every second that was ticking made a difference in this child's outcome. And to me, that was, that was pretty cool because I felt like it was a twofer. Not only did we save the mom, but we also saved a, a baby. And that was pretty cool. So I think of all the cases that I've ever been involved with, this is the one that's near and dearest to my heart. Um, the other thing that's kind of neat on this case is with all of the patients that we bring in, we, we follow up with them. And that's part of the cool thing of this job is that we can see them after the fact. In most nursing positions, you're busy working on the, with the next patient, so you can't do this. But um, I went and saw the mom after and got to see the baby. And actually, I got to hold the baby. I worked as a medic with Union Township Fire Department at that time, and they brought the baby um, they brought Corey to Union Township and we were able to, I was able to hold him and take pictures of him. But I actually followed his case for years and kept in touch with the mom and, and that was pretty neat. So I got to see how he did and that's something that is, you, you don't do in an average nursing position. So that was pretty cool. In this particular case, like, like I said, everything, everything um, happened expediently and it, you even have to wonder if this was destined to take place because actually the fire department weren't, they were not even called to the scene. They, they were driving back from taking a patient to the hospital and drove up on this scene. So this happened within seconds of the accident taking place. Um, and there's times that I feel like people are destined to survive or not um, according to a higher power that's outside of our ability. And in this particular case, I think that happened. I mean, they got there within seconds of the accident taking place. They called us immediately, and every single player from that point on um, did what was appropriate and did what needed to happen for this baby to survive. So to me, that's something that, that I think Corey's <clears throat> life was destined to happen. I think he, he was meant to be here for whatever reason. And the good or bad, I mean, there's times that patients that we take care of don't survive no matter how hard we, we try. And again, I feel like some of that, in order for me to compensate for that feeling, I realize that some of that is beyond my control. We can only do the best that we can and some of those patients survive and some of them do not and that, and that is beyond my control. And that's a way that I think I um, can tolerate some of the, the um, patients that we care for and, and how sad they are and, and, 
dealing with some of the tragedy 